Hey folks, it's Dr. Mike for Renaissance Periodization. Welcome to the Targeting the Muscle series. Today's muscle is the back muscle, plural. And the exercise is the barbell bent over row. We're gonna give you a few tips and tricks to get you to feel the barbell bent row more in the part of your back that you want. Let's get started. All right, folks. So the first big tip for properly bent rowing and getting your back to actually get a hit is the practice of hinging into the movement versus bending into the movement. So if you just bend over, notice my rounded lower back, and you do bent rows, like that's cool. Your arms are moving, your back is ostensibly pulling them, sweet. The problem is that as soon as you round your spine, two things happen. One, your pulling muscles get much weaker because anytime your back is rounded, the central drive coming from your brain through your spinal cord reduces because your body thinks it's not stable or safe. You can't literally row as much with your back if you round your back than if you keep your back flat. The second thing is that back rounding means that the spinal rector muscles have to work from a much more stretched position, a mechanically disadvantageous position. They have to try a lot harder to make sure you don't like pop your vertebrae out of your asshole or whatever they do if they turn off. So because your lower back muscles are always in a poor position, they tend to be the thing that gives out first. So if you're trying to train your spinal rectors at a lengthened isometric position while pretending to train your rest of your pulling muscles, that's a great way to bent row. Ideally, what you wanna do is give a challenge to your spinal erectors, something they may not get on a chest supported row, but you also wanna put them and the back into the most mechanically favorable position that allows all the other muscles to come close to failure and gives you a really strong launch point for being able to really contract those muscles. So instead of bending over, it shouldn't be a bent over row, for being super pedantic, it should be a hinge row. What you do is you basically do this to flick a deadlift down to the bar. Notice my tummy's out, my back is nice and tight. I've hinged using my hips, not my back. My back is straight, my spinal erectors are strong. I grab the bar and then rowing is easy as fuck and I can row hundreds of pounds and all of it is my back instead of just my spinal erectors. Lats, erectors, rhomboids, traps, everything with maximum load because they're strong in a strong position. Not rounded over, I'm nice and tight. Give that a thought. All right, next tip. If you want to completely isolate small muscles in your back, what you wanna do is make sure that your scapulae don't protract or retract at all. Even though tons of back muscles that are fucking gnarly and awesome and big help to do that. And if you do that, those muscles grow and then you look like a fucking tank. If you want the bent row to be like a really shitty version of a chest supported row, then by all means, keep your scaps stable. You hear people on recommendations saying, keep your scaps stable in rows. Namaste, thank you for your opinion. Kindly step the fuck out. A real bent over row uses all of the muscles in your back. That means that at the bottom, you're gonna protract your scapulae and at the top, you're going to retract. It's gonna happen naturally just because of the way you move. So instead of having a row where we're nice and arched and we do this, notice my arms are stopping at this weird point. Instead of that, watch what my shoulder blades do stretched at the beginning, come back, big stretch, come back, big stretch. My shoulder blades come forward every time. Notice my back is still arched. By doing that, you get your whole back involved. And at some point you're gonna get your back so big, friends will just no longer wanna hang out with you. Listen, I loved you, Frank, you were great, but your back's too big. The last tip, was about allowing your scapulae to protract at the bottom. But if you allow your scaps to protract and you start dropping your chest, there can be a lot of movement in the spine, which is sweet for a flexion row, but we're not trying to do a flexion row. We are trying to do a regular barbell row. If at the bottom we focus on keeping our chest up while simultaneously allowing our scaps to travel forward, it stretches the living fuck out of your upper back and makes for an awesome hypertrophy stimulus. So. Instead of bent rowing like this, where you'll notice the chest fall forward, 
what we do is arch our back nice and tight and begin with a chest super upright. And we're gonna hold that position. Chest up, chest up, big stretch. Chest up, oh fuck. Even with this demo weight, I feel my shit all fucked up. That folks is a good thing. What about grip width? Where do you wanna grab? Here's the actual answer. There are tons of right answers and it all depends on two things. One is stimulus to fatigue ratio, okay? Some people are built a certain way that when they grab here, they're gonna feel an amazing stimulus to the back and the fatigue is gonna be low. Some people, they're gonna grab here, it's gonna be best. Some people are even gonna grab here and it's gonna be best. The other thing is variation. You may be used to grabbing like this. For a few months, it gets stale. Now you grab out here, it gets better. Try a bunch of different grip widths, even underhand, especially if you have an easy bar, and you may find that it's all winners. Next, where to touch the bar. Just one simple rule. The closer the touch is this way, sternum, chest, etc., the more of your upper back, especially rhomboid, mid-trap musculature is engaged. Cool. The closer you touch towards your hips, the lower you touch, the fractionally more lat involvement you get, but you still get a bunch of that other shit too. There's no correct answer here, you just two different variations, right? So if you're in a position where you're getting the bar here and you touch right up to the chest, more upper back, even more rear delts. On the other hand, if you touch right into the hips, it's a bit more lat. There's no right way or wrong way, just know the stuff. So when you're targeting whatever part of your back that you're targeting with rows, which could be multiple parts, you're doing the right variation or anywhere on that spectrum that gets you your goals check marked. What about deficits? Here's the rule with rowing. As long as your back is tight and your arms are straight and stretched at the bottom and you can still get that full stretch, it's the correct answer. If that occurs for you here at a spine bend like there or at a hip bend like this, fine. Here, fine. Here, still totally cool. If you are flexible enough, regular plates may not allow you to get a full stretch at the bottom and you may want a bit more of a bend because generally the further over you bend, the more of your mid and lower back can get hit versus if you just, uh, if you bent over right here, it's almost all upper back. So you can do something like this. You can take one of these little hunky-dory rubber mats, push it under, step up, and bent roll off of it. Totally fine. You could do many mats. Instead of using these kinds of 25s, you can use the regular 25s, which are smaller. Auto creates a deficit, no wrong answers. In my bodybuilding career so far, I've done 25s rows. I've done 35s rows, slightly elevated. I've done regular rows all the time. Back when I started, I was so inflexible, even the regular handles, I couldn't, the regular size plates, I couldn't touch the ground with. So here's the thing, as long as your back is tight and this is stretched, you're already doing it right. If you can slowly get down and get even deeper, on average, it'll make it a little bit better, but never, ever, ever go to a deficit, which requires you to round your back or lose a huge fraction of how much weight you can lift from the ground. Stick with those tips, folks, and you'll have such a big back, people on the street will come up to you and go, hey, um, no big deal, but did you know that you had a fucking huge back? And you'd be like, hey, thanks a lot. And on that, we'll see you guys next time.